The Bengals have added plenty of key free agents over the past week, including Geno Stone. Well, the biggest member of the Bengals, Orlando Brown Jr., is here to talk about Geno Stone and much, much more. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. He is Andrew Fox Miller, and this is Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Enter the Jungle airs every single Tuesday at 8 Eastern on the YouTube channel, Cincinnati Bengals Talk Weekly on Bally Sports. And we are part of the Big Play Network. Part uh, Shout out, by the way, to our sponsors, Typico Sportsbook and Garage Beer. They are a big part of the show. And Andrew, let's dive in because it's been a, a very, very big week. And speaking of big, Orlando Brown Jr. will join the show in just a few minutes here on Enter the Jungle to discuss Geno Stone, Joe Mixon, his offseason. But before we do that, the Bengals' biggest free agent signing from a Money standpoint is Sheldon Rankins. The defensive tackle agreed to a two-year, $26 million deal and was officially introduced on Monday. I love this signing. He bolsters their pass rush. He gives them something they haven't had over the past couple of years. It stings not having DJ Reader. It hurts not having DJ Reader. But having Sheldon Rankins is certainly a big boost to this defensive front. Yeah, exactly that. The Bengals, they... They put the money out there. They handled interior defensive line and got that pass rush going. We've been wanting it. We've got it. And uh, this dude's bringing the energy, bringing the hype, terrorize the Bengals. I love it. It, it. I love it coming full circle like this. You said terrorize the Bengals. He's played the Bengals four times in his career. He has six sacks, including three sacks last year against <laughs> Joe Burrow in a 30-27 to 27 Houston Texans victory in a game where – the Texans came into Paycor Stadium, ended the Bengals' four-game winning streak, and kind of sent, four days later, Joe Burrow suffers that injury, sent the Bengals into a tailspin that set the tone for the rest of the year. So it was a huge win for the Texans. Rankins was a big part of that, and I expect him to be a big part of this Bengals defensive front, and he reunites with a familiar face in that defensive line room. He played with Trey Hendrickson. They are good friends. They played together in New Orleans, and he's excited to be re reunited with Trey. That's my guy. So, you know, it, from I always tell people, um, you know, you, you guys have, you know, watched Trey practice and I'm sure seen him fight and, and, and do all that kind of stuff. Um, that's who he was when I met him his, at his rookie mini camp practice. I'm pretty sure he got kicked out for fighting. Like, so that's, you know, so, um, you know, to a degree I was, uh, you know, unofficially Trey's Wrangler in New Orleans. So, uh, so you know, happy to hold those reins again. And I'm pretty sure that that will be the, the sentiments I feel from the moment we start practicing again. Uh, it'll just be that. Only difference is now I'm a little older, so I'm like, Trey, don't make me come all the way over there, please. This is, you know. Um, but, you know, like I said, I mean, he's, you know, a, a supreme talent. So, listen, hey, if he, if he wants to fight, I'll be there. It's fine. It's fine. I love it. I love his attitude. Make sure you check out the entire news conference. It might be the best news conference, introductory news conference ever, because Sheldon Rankins was very real. You can check it out right here on the channel, Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And one more thing, Andrew, his mindset, he has 29 and a half sacks, and for an interior lineman, that's a lot. And yet, it's the ones that he doesn't make that stand out the most. I spend most of my time watching all the ones I didn't make instead of the ones I made because the ones I make, I truly expect myself to make those plays. So um, I'm always just trying to find ways to get better. It's never good enough for me. I love it. It's never good enough for me. I have a feeling Bengals fans are going to love him uh, from the jump, from that news conference on. I think he's going to make a, a huge, huge impact. Someone that you've been excited about from a – a free agency standpoint last year, and I certainly think he's poised for a huge year this year, is Orlando Brown Jr. He was teammates with New Bengals safety Geno Stone in Baltimore. We will get Orlando Brown Jr.'s opinion on Geno Stone and much, much more coming up next. Orlando, uh, I appreciate the time as always. How's the offseason treating you? Offseason's been great, man. Um, just right here in Cincy, I've been grinding up at the facility. Um, Man, just, uh, you know, it's it's somewhat refreshing. It's my first time, I feel like, in probably since going into my fourth year where I don't have something going on in the offseason. And, you know, whether that be a trade, 
franchise tag, free agency. Um, I feel like I've dealt with those back to back to back. And so, man, to have uh, just to be able to have some stability, uh, to be able to train up at the facility, man, and, and you know, the comfortability of being in my home uh, during this time period, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I know Cincinnati's certainly excited to have you. Frank Pollock mentioned that you were training yeah. uh, at the facility this offseason, so I'm glad you're enjoying life yep. in Cincinnati. Uh, the, the good news is you've been here for a little bit. You can show Geno Stone around, and yeah. I got to be honest, when the, the Bengals signed him and uh, or came to terms with him, you tweet out, Geno has one of the realest out of the mud stories to date. People like that deserve to win at life. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Oh duh! They were teammates in Baltimore. Right? Yeah, it, oh, yeah, it hadn't clicked. Yeah, <laughs> but what are the Bengals getting with, with Geno Stone? Because obviously, a lot of fans are excited to have him here in Cincinnati. Yeah, man, I think you're getting a very humble, humble, hardworking, uh, determined, big chip on his shoulder guy. And you know, I, I imagine that you know the success that he had in Baltimore, he'll be able to replicate that here in Cincinnati just by the way that we prepare and the way that our coaches and the staff, the front office, they pour into you, they give you that confidence that you need. And so uh, he's a guy, man, that's had to really work for everything he got, you know, even going to the University of Iowa. Uh, you know, I think I, I could be wrong, but I think he was a transfer at some point in time or something like that. And then, um, you know, being a seventh round draft pick, a practice squad guy, um, I mean, he's he's had he's been through the ringer. I think he spent a little time at a, on a different team during a certain point, you know, whether they picked him up on their practice squad. And so, you know, he he's uh, he's a guy that's had to work for everything he's got. And man, I got a ton of respect for, you know, guys that go through the ringer like that and they come out on this. And it's it's not easy at all. I know you're you're obviously a member of the Bengals. My job is to try to figure out every nook and cranny <laughs> about uh, free agency and what the plans are. And obviously. Yep. I think yeah. it's pretty clear now Gino was one of their top targets, period. Not just top yeah. safety targets, yeah. top targets. Seven interceptions last year, had the interception on on Joe in week two that was kind of the game changer where yep. you guys were rallying and you still ended up rallying, but that was the difference in a one-score game. Yeah, What makes him such a, a smart football player? Because we know what Lou's going to do. He's going to put him back there, have him play that center field role as a safety and use his instincts and his ball skills and all of those things to make plays on the back end. Yeah, I you know, I'm I'm interested to see, you know, how he how he does overall. Um, you know, in in terms of where they play him and everything, man, but you know, I would imagine he probably was a top guy for them, you know, as you mentioned, uh his statistics kind of speak for itself, you know, those seven interceptions and uh, you know, coming from uh, that Baltimore team who, you know, I think Kyle Hamilton was an all pro Marcus Williams is a guy that they had had there. And I think he was hurt and, uh, Gino took advantage of that opportunity and, and ran away with it, man. And, uh, you know, especially, especially I'm, I'm glad he's a Bengal now though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. And, and obviously you reacted on social media. Like I mentioned, what, what yep. was your first reaction yes. when you see the news? Cause I'm sure, I, I don't know about you, I have notifications on. So if, if something comes down right now, I see it. I yep. want to know about it, even if it's not Bengals related. I just love this stuff. Yeah. And so when I saw that, I'm like, all right, the Bengals got one of their top targets. Yeah, no, I've been keeping up too, man. Uh, I've been keeping up too. <laughs> I, I like, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. You know, I am. I'm all ball, so it's just a part yeah. of me. Uh, but I was super excited, man, uh, when I saw that. You know, obviously knowing, um, you know, I mean how how they feel about them and, and, you know, for any organization to give someone that type of money, man, you know, that, uh, they've done their homework and their research. And I got a lot of confidence in our, our staff and, um, our front office and the way that we approach things, the way Lou operates. I mean, they're going to put Gino in the best position to be him. Is, is there anything fans should know about Gino Stone, the person that, that we might not necessarily know since you were his yeah. teammate? No, man, super down to earth. Um, yeah. You know, that's something that really stood out to me uh, always from the moment he came in as a rookie. Uh, super down to earth. And this is, as I mentioned, a guy that's humble, um, a guy that, you know, sometimes will beat me in a facility uh, at that time period in my career. And that's really hard to do. So, you know, I, I, I got a ton of I have a ton of respect for him and, and just his mindset and approach. Man, one of those guys, you know, you meet, you say he's raised right. You're. A starting offensive tackle when he gets into the league for the Ravens. Oh yeah, <laughs> obviously he's seventh round pick, so it's different. How did you guys? How did you guys get to know each other? Because I'm sure there are plenty of starting offensive linemen 
yeah. that aren't getting to know the seventh round safety. Yeah, you know, I, I just that's that's just, you know, kind of who he is, you know, the type mm-hmm. of person he is. And uh, you know, I'm I'm someone that's gonna mingle around the locker room and get to know everybody in there. That's just kind of always been my personality. Um and yeah, man, he would come in there pretty early in the weight room and and I'd be in there as well, get my early work in. And as I said a few times, he'd even beat me in there. So uh, you know, we just end up having small talk like that. You know, I think he's from, as I mentioned, man, he's, you know, went to Iowa. He's from a small town in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, comes from a, comes from a pretty good family as well. So, uh, it's just weird, you know, how to, how the game and the sport works, but I would definitely say probably I got to know him the most, like just getting there pretty early and, and having those conversations. Full circle. Now he's your teammate again. Uh, yep. Someone just to switch gears, someone that, that was your teammate for a long time at Oklahoma and yep. then last season as well here in Cincinnati, Joe Mixon mm-hmm. uh, yeah. traded to the Houston Texans. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation, certainly yeah. about his future over the past year plus. Yep. Uh, what What's it like when you see that and you, you see the move that, that ultimately he he's traded? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough, man, because, you know, as you mentioned, man, this is, uh, you know, that's what makes football so special, like not to take it off track, but to put things in perspective. You know, you get to know someone in their best and their worst moments. And after a bad game, after not being able to get through a workout, whatever it may be, um, you get to know someone, you know, in their best and worst moments. And so you see them in vulnerable states, you know, on opposite ends. And, uh, you know, you really get to know the person for who they are because you go through all of that with them. And, uh, you know, obviously me and Mix, after knowing each other since we were 17 years old at the University of Oklahoma, uh, being in the same draft class, and I redshirted, he redshirted. We had the same major for so long, um, so we had a lot of classes together. And to be able to see where he's taking his career now, man, is special. And, you know, it's sad to see him uh, leave as a Bengal. He's forever a legend. Um, and, you know, I got a ton of respect for the way the front office handled things, putting him, you know, they didn't have to trade him you know, to the, to the Houston Texans, but they put them in a really good position. And, uh, you know, man, I, I respect the hell out of the front office for that and the way that they handle things with that. But it's part of the business, you know, people come and go, man. And, you know, it's, it sucks. And, you know, his, his leadership, um, his energy will be missed. I think that's something about you that is unique. Not that players don't understand that, but mm-hmm. I think you have a, a unique perspective, obviously, your father playing in the NFL for as long oh, as yeah. he did and being great. But what you've had to go through, you're, you're still young. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and we're talking yeah. about Baltimore Raven. Can, yeah. I could ask you about Kansas City Chiefs teammates, trades, yeah. franchise tags, all the things you just discussed. Yeah. And, and so I, I think you have a unique perspective when it comes to the business side in this league. And, and, and certainly yeah. that probably helps at times like this. Oh, man, big time, big time. Just because of that, you know, as you mentioned, man, just every everything that I've experienced and, and been told or seen and learned, uh, all of that's played into it. And, you know, it's just like I said, it's unfortunate. but And it's, you know, it's the game, man. It's, it's tough. Orlando, you mentioned you're, you're still in, in Cincinnati. Can we get to you and your off season? For a yeah. second, is that all right? Yeah, all nothing, right. Nothing crazy. <laughs> no, no, nothing crazy. I, yeah. I love that. I love that you're you're here. I love that you're working out at the facility. Yep. Is it as simple as wanting to be grounded and not having to think about all the business side like you've had to do in recent years and just kind of taking a breath, so to speak, and focusing on ball? Yeah, yeah. No, man. It's been it's been a somewhat of a peace of mind. I would say, you know, just because as I mentioned, man, it's it's. I've dealt with so much these last three off seasons and to be able to be here in Cincinnati, Joey Bose and his training staff, Todd, Garrett, you know, how well they know my body, uh, our trainers, how well they know my body, um, you know, and everything that I need to get better at and uh, things that, you know, they're hearing from Frank or I'm telling them, like all of those things going together. And um, it really just allows me to do my part and just grind, put my head down and just grind every day. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, you know, to be able to, to be able to do it here, man, to do it here, to play here in the city, to be a Bengal. Um, it's so special. And, you know, I'm really, really enjoying my off season being able to go to work with and, and be able to walk in the facility and see those same faces that, you know, I, I'm seeing every day pretty much in season. It's the middle of March. Obviously it's 
a, a process training to to play 17 regular season games a, a full training camp and obviously the playoffs as well mm-hmm. and, and that's your goal yeah what what's mid-march training like what would it especially for it, it uh, we kind of get it for some yeah. receivers and different <laughs> things but for yeah. A, a, a giant left tackle. What, what do you yeah. do? What's your training regimen? Yeah. Well, I, right now, I mean, it's just a lot of old school, you know, stuff I would say in the sense of your back squats, your deadlifts, your bench presses, you know, uh, hang cleans uh, to some extent. You know what I mean? Your more traditional movements uh, in the weight room. I, I would say once I kind of get in season, I normally, uh, as opposed to back squatting, I may do a little something different. You know what I mean? In terms of Love, maybe less load or or leg uh, presses, you know what I mean. So now I'm I'm able to kind of I use the quote beat my body up, but that's not really what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just uh I guess you could say keeping it keeping it keeping an old school foundation. Uh, that's what I that's how I like to kind of take my approach in the, at this part in the off season. What's your favorite lift? Uh, the- favorite lift? I mean, it's gonna sound crazy, but it's the squats, back squats for sure. Really. Hell okay. yeah. People yeah. people hate those. Like <laughs> Yeah, <no>. okay. <laughs> I, I blame Jerry Smith for that. Uh my strength coach at uh University of Oklahoma. I probably hated him when I got to college and uh I mean man, the amount he made me do when I got there, I mean I had no other choice. So <laughs> learn to love him. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Uh, two two more quick things for you because I'm just curious. Obviously Joe Burrow's in the facility a ton rehabbing. Yep. He's he's been on record saying that. I yeah. You know him well. You played a whole season with him and mm-hmm. you're black and form and all of those things. But yeah. have you gotten to know him better and, and build that rapport even more since you guys are both there every day? Oh, definitely, man. Uh, you know, I would definitely say <laughs> just the moment I signed, uh, you know, seeing him out there in New York City, ironically, um, I feel like um, friendship and relationship has grown. And I mean, he, he's he's the best, though. You know, what I mean, he's 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 just the best, man. Just getting to know him and and how he how he is as a person. Uh, who he is as a teammate and quarterback, I mean, it's it's a reason why you know he's he's one of the top two quarterbacks in this league. I don't think anyone watching this is going to debate you there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> last thing, and I, I promise I'll, I'll let you go. Yep. Have you? You've had multiple offensive line coaches. Yep. Frank Pollock. What what's what stands out about him? What makes him special? Because I, I think people look at. A veteran late in an offensive line like last year and, yep. and also with Cordell, but yep. uh, the other four of you guys are vets. And then they look and they're like, all right, well, at some point they need to have the, you know, younger guys developing and stuff. That's just outside looking in. Yeah. A- and I think Frank's a good offensive line coach, full disclosure. I've said that. I'm not oh, yeah, saying absolutely. it just because you're here. Yeah. W- what makes him a-, a quality coach? Yeah. Well, you know, um, Frank is is a pros coach and he does an amazing job at giving you the proper tool set and allowing you to be able to play your game. And on this level, a lot of times you find coaches that want to mold guys and change their game and make it how they see it um, from a coaching perspective. The way that Frank takes takes his approach, I mean, he allows guys to really go out there and be themselves, you know, starting with myself. Um, you know, my footwork, we tweak it from within, you know, the, my play style, we t- we're tweaking my hand placement and, and hand styles from within. And so uh, when you have a coach that is really focusing on the small details like that, that, you know, I, as one of his famous quotes, uh, master in the mundane, uh, when you have those type of things, man, great things come out of that. And so, you know, in terms of Guys not developing, man, I haven't been here long enough to really be able to give you a quality answer on that. All I can tell you is, man, I, I had one of the best years in terms of uh, the way that I felt uh, out there. You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, Joe got hurt or whatever happened, but, you know, it's it's part of it. And through all of that, man, Frank never wavered. He never changed. He always stood 10 toes down. And that's what, you know, why I got so much respect for him, man. And I really appreciate him uh, sticking his neck out to even get me here uh, to – you know, give me the opportunity to to be one of the leaders in the room. Uh, I mean, man, he's a, he's amazing. I can go on from I can go all about him all day, but I mean, Frank is is another man that's that's allowed me to uh, put my career on the proper trajectory. He is Orlando Brown Jr., the Bengal star left tackle. Orlando, uh, I certainly appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate you. 
Welcome back into Enter the Jungle. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Erpine, and we had an awesome time at St. Taddy's Day. Shout out to the Cincy Hat crew at the Cincy Hat.com. Uh, Matt, uh, Cincy Hat Matt, obviously Ted Karras. It's crazy to think about, but they raised $45,000 on Sunday for the Village of Marici, helping adults with disabilities. And they're doing game changing work, obviously. And it was great to be a part of that, Andrew. No doubt. I mean, every everything across the board, the way it was uh, coordinated, the energy of the fan base that was there. I mean, how many times did you and I even just get stuff for people that watch Enter the Jungle that talked about things that we've talked about in videos? Like it was just, it was so great. And and the players and Zach Taylor showing up and showing their support. The energy was just unmatched. I couldn't have thought of a better way to spend my St. Patrick's Day than with uh, the crew involved. I, I thought it was really cool. Like Ted's parents were helping. So yeah. shout out to them. Yes. Ted obviously stood up there, took every picture, signed every autograph for basically six hours straight, which is wild. Like that's really, really hard to do. And the thing you mentioned, Zach Taylor, Ted wasn't aware of this because he was taking pictures and signing autographs. But Zach had a line of his own and was signing and taking pictures. And he wasn't scheduled to do that. Trey Hendrickson showed up and signed autographs took pictures as well brad robbins brad robbins we chatted with him a lot hopefully he's uh he's poised for a bounce back season i think and i know there are a lot of people down on brad robbins but i think he'll uh, bounce back in a big way so shout out to everyone that showed up that we saw if you got your cincy tattoos uh certainly uh congrats to you also make sure you check out the entire tattoo video right here yes on cincinnati bengals talk because well ted got tatted Thanks to Joe Burrow. He didn't want to. Wasn't planning on it, but he did. He did. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Erpine. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Enter the jungle.